Okay, sometimes when you solve inequalities, they come out to two different or two unique outcomes. One would be infinite solutions, the other would be no solutions. And here's a couple of examples to illustrate that. Now, take for instance this problem. Some kids get to this point and they know and they see that if they subtract the x from both sides, they realize that the x is going to cancel out. So a lot of times they'll come up with another method or some other way and justify it just so they, they think that the x has to stay there, which this is not the case. So when your x's cancel out, just simply bring down your 5, bring down your inequality, this x cancels out, and now bring down your 3. And once you get to this point, you can't graph it um, because the graph you can't show that other than that 5 is higher to the right of 3. But what this is saying is that 5 is greater than or equal to 3. Well, let's analyze that and go, is this true or is this not true? Well, in fact, on a number line, here's 5, here's 3, and yes, 5 is greater than 3. Now, you might hear me say, when, does, when is this true? Well, it's true all the time. Therefore, because it's true all the time and 5 is greater than or equal to 3, you can say that this has infinite solutions. Now, what does that mean? That means it doesn't matter what number you choose. Whatever number you pick is going to make that inequality true. Let's say, for instance, okay, we have... Let's just say, uh, let me minimize this for a second. I'm going to push this up to the side. Now, what if I take this right here, x plus 5 is greater than or equal to x plus 3. And since I said it was infinite solutions, let's just pick one random number. Uh, let's take, for instance, let's do negative 4, okay? When x is negative 4, let's see if this still is true. All right. Now, negative 4 plus 5 is a positive 1 bring down the inequality, and negative 4 plus 3 is a negative 1. Therefore, it is true because 1 is greater than or equal to 1. So, like I said, you can pick any number and that inequality will be true. Now, in this particular problem, the first problem we did was uh, infinite solutions. So, let's take a look at what happens at this juncture. Notice you have to do some work here. So we're going to divide, we're going to distribute, sorry, and then we're going to get 2x plus 6. So 2x plus 6. Now, over here we don't have to do anything. Just bring down the 5 plus 2x. I'm then going to subtract 2x from what, both sides because I want to get one to the other. And when I do that, notice what happens is that the x's disappear and I'm left with 6 is less than 5. Unlike the previous problem, this is not true. Okay, this is not true. And because this is not true, it has no solutions. It doesn't matter what you pick. You can never come up with a number that would make that you'd play, replace x with that would make this inequality true. Because the two numbers that are left after the variables disappear or, or go away, 6 is less than 5, cannot happen.